These are the lids that will be covered. This generic fermenting lid that doesn't have a specific brand name, so I will call it the water and grommet fermentation lid. The mason tops pickle pipe lid, the easy fermenter lid with extraction pump, the Sofico lid, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, the ball lid with spring, and a regular jar lid. I'm gonna go through each lid system and show you how it works, give a demonstration on how to use it, and most importantly, the results that it produces. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video where I'll share my favorites and the one I don't like at all. Links for all the lid systems as well as chapters can be found in the video description. Let's get started. This is the water and grommet lid system. What you'll do is fill this plastic piece with water up to the marked fill line, which I'm going to do now. With the water inside, snap on the top cap. Place the plastic unit into the grommet within the lid. Then tightly secure the lid on the jar. I only have this style of lid for my gallon size jars, but they make this fermentation lid for wide mouth jars as well. Regardless of jar size, it functions the same. Here's how it works. The gases produced during fermentation rise up and out through the plastic piece and fully escape through the little holes on top. Therefore, no manual burping is needed during the fermentation process and the lid can stay on tight. This is considered a one-way flow system. The water inside the plastic unit allows the air and the gas to escape through the valve, but does not allow air to flow back in. Although it prevents new air from getting inside, it does not extract the air that's already present in the jar at the time of lid placement. How well does it prevent fermentation funk such as mold or calm yeast? Let's take a look. This is a jar of fermented pickles that I allowed to go for 30 days. Removing the lid here, let's take a look inside. That very thick white layer is calm yeast. Although it's quite ugly, it's harmless. It will not endanger you nor make the fermentation unsafe. So don't fret over calm yeast. If you want to learn more about calm yeast, watch my fermentation funk series, video number one, where I dive more into the topic with examples. Although I demonstrate how to remove calm yeast in most of my fermentation recipe videos, I'll give a quick recap. In this case, since the calm yeast has contact with the pickles, literally on top of them, I'll remove the affected pickles, which will take most of the calm yeast out with them. But the pickles are not bad. They are perfectly fermented and good to eat. So I will simply rinse off these surface pickles with a little water and eat as normal. The fermented food below the brine is perfectly good as well. Then I'll use a paper towel to wipe out the inside of the jar. A few specks remaining is not a problem, but if it bothers you, simply lift out the remaining bits with a spoon. That's a lot of calm yeast that developed over the 30 day period, but do take note though, no mold developed. If you want to see what mold on a fermentation looks like, watch this video all the way through because it will be seen later using a different lid system. So is this amount of calm yeast guaranteed to develop with every fermentation using this lid system? No. Small microorganism differences in the environment and the food can create big changes inside the jar. So don't let it deter you. To learn more about these types of changes, watch this video of mine where I explain further. Back to this lid system though, what you're fermenting and the length of fermentation time can also make a difference. Here's an example. This is a jar of fermented stuffed Italian peppers using the same lid system. This only fermented for seven days. And as you can see, no calm yeast developed. No other surface funk such as mold or slime developed either. When the fermentation process is complete and I'm ready to place the jar into the refrigerator for long-term storage, there's no need to keep the valve piece on. Simply remove it, place some plastic wrap over the mouth of the jar and place the lid back on with the grommet hole or place the original lid on the jar, the one that does not have a grommet hole. And in that case, no plastic wrap is necessary. Next up, a regular lid. Nowadays, I use these plastic lids. You can also use these canning lids like this. The reason why I switched from metal to plastic is because when the metal is exposed to the brine, the salt in the brine acts corrosively. So a shiny new ring like this ends up corroding like this example here. 
To get a bunch of these plastic lids is pretty inexpensive and they last indefinitely. So if using a regular lid, all you need to do is keep it loosened instead of tight. This allows the gases to escape without needing to burp the jar during the fermentation period. However, this is a two-way flow system because some air can also get into the jar since the regular lid has no special one-way valve. The oxygen can encourage calm yeast. But remember, calm yeast is not detrimental to the fermentation. Let's take a look at these pickles that have been fermenting for eight days. That is calm yeast, easy enough to clean out. And I would say this is a very typical result when using regular lids. FYI, that little dark speck is not mold, it's a piece of spice that floated up. The ball spring and air valve lid is a two-in-one unit. The spring acts as a weight and the lid has the one-way valve so gases can escape, but air does not get in. Keep in mind though that all of these one-way valve systems do not extract the oxygen that's already present in the jar when the lid is originally put on. That's why calm yeast has the opportunity to develop. Do be careful when you open it because it is literally spring-loaded. Let's see what we find when we open these pickles that have been fermenting for eight days. There is the presence of calm yeast. Again, easy enough to clean out and there is no mold present. Next up is the Sofico lid. Its little one-way valve is right here. Gases can escape but air does not re-enter. Here are some fermenting pickles on day eight. And as you can see, some brine was pushed through that top valve during the bubbly stage of the fermentation and has since dried up. Let's open it up and see what we find. Look at that, just a little bit of some patchy calm yeast, but comparatively, not really that much. This is actually my first time using this brand of lid, so I'm impressed. My theory on why this lid had a result of so little calm yeast is because different from the other lids, it gets pushed into the jar, not screwed on. This pushing in actually pushed out most of the air, resulting in very little calm yeast development. This is the easy fermenter lid. It has the one-way valve on the lid, but what makes this fermenting lid different is that it comes with a pump to extract the oxygen that's present in the jar when the lid is initially put on. Here's a demonstration with a fresh jar of pickles to be fermented. Screw the lid on tight and then place the extraction pump over the orange valve on the lid. Then pull up on the pump handle several times until it becomes difficult to pull up. You'll notice that as the air is getting sucked up and out, contents from within the jar are also getting sucked up. This is not a problem, just a visual that the pump is doing what it's supposed to be doing. After a few pumps, this is me actually pulling up on the handle and I can't really extend it any further. That's when you're done and you can remove the pump. This is a balance though. Once the pump handle becomes resistant, you don't wanna continue pulling so hard that you break it. But you also need to pull enough times to make sure that all the oxygen is indeed out of the jar. In a couple of days, the fermentation will begin to bubble as it's supposed to in the early stages of fermentation. Some of the brine may push out through the top of the valve along with the gases. This is nothing to be concerned about. And just a side note, to learn more about the distinct stages of fermentation, watch this video of mine here that explains in detail each stage of fermentation. Here on day five or six, the bubbly phase is slowing down and this now on top is dried brine. And it looks like a little calm yeast is wanting to develop on that brine. Not a problem. What we want to know is if the calm yeast is growing on the inside. On day eight of the fermentation, I'm removing the lid. Ta-da! Not only is there no mold, there is no calm yeast. This is due to all the air being extracted from the jar at the onset of the lid placement. This means no calm yeast spores in the air got the opportunity to hang out in the jar after the lid was put on. Let's compare a regular lid to the easy fermenter on this kale that has been fermenting for three weeks. Quite a bit of calm yeast developed by day 21 with the regular lid and a very faint amount of calm yeast with the easy fermenter. If calm yeast really bothers you, the easy fermenter is the way to go. 
I must also say that it's not a 100% guarantee that you will never get fermentation funk when using the Easy Fermenter or any other fermenting lid system. But if you do, troubleshooting questions can be, was everything including the weight and the fermenting lid washed with hot soapy water just before use? Because even a fermenting lid like the Easy Fermenter with its air extraction pump can't prevent mold 100% if all the equipment isn't thoroughly cleaned just before use. This is the pickle pipe lid system. Its little valve is at the top here. It is a one-way flow system like the other fermentation lids. The pickle pipe gets placed over the top of the jar and is held down by a wide mouth jar ring. Okay, now for what I think might be the most important demonstration of all the lids, because every time I have ever used this lid, it has produced the results you are about to witness. Here are some fermenting pickles on day eight. Look at that horrific mold development. And it's not just a speck, it's quite advanced. I don't believe this is a fluke because I get this mold result every time I use the pickle pipe. With all of these lid demonstrations, I made the fermenting pickles exactly the same at the same time with the same brine and the jar, the weight, the lids, the hands were all washed in hot soapy water. Each jar fermented for a total of eight days before being opened and none were opened after the initial lid placement. Here are some more of my results using the pickle pipe. These are some fermented cherry tomatoes, horrible mold development. This is a red sauerkraut that developed fuzzy white and black mold. And the worst yet, a complete black mold takeover with this other red sauerkraut. Like I've said, I never get mold developments like this when I ferment, only when I use the pickle pipe, which is why I don't use it anymore. All of these moldy ferments are unsafe to eat since advanced mold like this releases mycotoxins into the fermenting food at unsafe levels. They were all thrown away. To learn more about mold on fermentations, watch my fermentation funk series video number two. Is it guaranteed that your experience will be like mine if you use a pickle pipe? No. In fact, some people love them. Some people swear by them. But since mold is my only experience with this type of lid, I do not share that sentiment. In my opinion, there are better options to use, including just a regular lid. These are my favorite fermenting lids that I recommend. And I feel neutral about the water and grommet lid. It's fine. It doesn't amaze me, but I have absolutely no qualm in using it. So if that's what you have, great and I think you can guess which lid I dislike. I have a lot more fermentation education videos that can help make you a more confident and competent fermenter. Check out the playlist right here. And my fermentation funk series is right here. And when you feel ready to dive in, check out all my yummy fermentation recipes that I have for you in this playlist over here, such as sauerkraut, carrots, pickles, and more. Video links can also be found in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.